All right. Thanks, Nate. Uh, hi, my name is Myung Law, and my project this summer was exploring how social networks affect student academic performance and health. Professor James Fowler, Dr. Karen Kalfas, and Professor Lucilla Ono Machado, all here at UCSD, uh, collaborated in leading this project. And before I came here this summer, uh, I got my BS in mechanical engineering from MIT in 2007. And for the last four years, I worked as a software developer, mostly uh, on web applications. This fall, I'll be starting my master's in computer science here at UCSD. So, next. Why social networks? Um, so currently, we, uh, we only view students in, in isolation. So we know, for example, that Jimmy has a 4.0 GPA or that 86% of our students graduate. Uh, however, um, uh, research has been done to, uh, uh, to examine the, the interconnections between people and how uh, one person's choices uh, affect others. And so this diagram is a, um, is a social network or the, the social graph from the uh, Framingham Heart Study, which shows individuals as, uh, as nodes in the graph and the connections between them as the edges. And the yellow nodes indicate individuals who have been classified as obese. And Dr. Fowler has done research that shows that obesity affects up to three degrees throughout the graph. So that means that if an individual is classified as obese, then it is more likely that their friends are obese also their friends' friends, and even their friends' friends' friends, three degrees out into the graph. So as you can see, uh, an, individual's <coughs> Excuse me. an individual's characteristics have a strong effect on their social network, and uh, as the converse, the social network also has a strong effect on the individual as well. So our goal with this project is to do something sort of similar. So we'd like to, to build the social graph or model the social graph of the students at UCSD and then bring in additional data sources uh, such as uh, students' GPA or their health information from the health clinic and use that to examine the effects that the social network has on these characteristics. And by doing so, we, uh, we hope to um, gain some insight into, into how students affect each other and, and also um, possibly uh, improve the services that, that we offer students. So some of the potential results we see are outbreak containment. So if a student comes into the health clinic with, with the flu, then uh, and if we have a model of the social graph where we can see which, which, students, which other students the student relates to the most, then uh, we can alert those students um, to take preventative measures, such as washing their hands more frequently or getting a flu shot. And by thus, we can try to uh, contain the spread of this outbreak. Uh, Dr. Kalfas, uh, Dr. Kalfas's research involves um, examining ways different kinds of interventions uh, affect students in uh, promoting positive long-term uh, health choices. And so uh, the, the more information we, we learn about the student population here at UCSD, then it may be possible to, to leverage their peer-to-peer -peer interactions in order to uh, improve the kinds of interventions we, we offer at-risk students. And lastly, we would like to understand more about what motivates students to share their information. And so uh, as, we, as we ask students to participate in our study, we can examine the ways um, that, they, that they choose to participate and also um, perhaps improve our, our uh, in incentive techniques in, in order to get more students to participate. So the three major tasks we have on this project is first to build the, the infrastructure in order to store a, a local copy of the, the Facebook social graph. The second, we need to incentivize students to par participate. So uh, the, the first part is uh, developing our authorization method, which of course needs to be approved by the IRB as well as uh, develop a class sharing Facebook app, which we've uh, determined is, is a likely way for, for us to incentivize students to, to participate by building um, this, this Facebook app that, that will uh, provide them uh, a useful social class sharing service so that you know, they'll see this and their friends will see it and hopefully um, it, it'll sort of uh, snowball into to having more students participate. And the last thing we need to do is to gather our external data sources. So getting uh, cooperation and collaboration with different departments throughout the university, like, uh, like the registrar to get course data and the health clinic to get uh, infection data 
and, uh, and bring this into our social graph model so then we can start to uh, analyze the effects that the graph has on these different characteristics. So a, sh a short uh, sort of screenshot demo of, of the work that I've done so far is first, um, you know, I've, I built the, the, the infrastructure to, to store the local copy of the Facebook database. And here's a, a mock-up I made of how the, you know, Triton Link front page may look with our, um, our new authorization mechanism here. So we have uh, this login with Facebook button this login with Facebook button, which students will recognize uh, from their travels on the web. So that we're using a familiar authorization mechanism for them to approve uh, our use of their data. So once they click on this button, it'll bring up the Facebook authorization screen. And so here, uh, students will see you know, what information we're requesting and given the choice to allow or not allow our application to use their, use their information. Uh, you can see um, on the left side of the screen, or the bottom side, there's a terms of service link where they're able to see uh, sort of, they're able to view details about how our application will be, or how our study will be using their information. And um, so we took this demo to, to a member of the IRB and he informed us that, uh, that uh, through the terms of service link, it's uh, the students are giving sort of an implicit approval of our use of their information, and it's important for students to be forced to give an explicit permission, so more of an opt-in model. So um, through, through his feedback, we, we're going to develop a screen that pops up before this one where uh, students, will, uh, students will view the, I guess, the explicit terms of the study and how we're gonna use our information and given a choice there to opt-in or opt-out before they're taken to this Facebook authorization screen. And so once students uh, have opted into our study and authorized our application access to their Facebook data, like, uh, they're able to access our app on Facebook where um, uh, the, this is just you know, some data that I made up, but a potential student could come to the Facebook app and see their current course schedule as reflected in the registrar, as well as other students that they're Facebook friends with who have also approved our application will show up uh, who are also taking the same classes. So we see this as a, a really good social opportunity for uh, not only for students to have um, you know, this information that they would like access to now, you know, because friends always, you know, are interested in what classes they're taking together, as well as give them a little bit, a little bit of transparency into our study and um, the kinds of information that we're gathering and, uh, and how we're using it. Let's see. So, uh, in short, this, this summer was a really great opportunity. Um, I, uh, I was, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, you know, design, architect, and build the system from the ground up, and um, and that that freedom was a, a really good experience for me. Uh, and as I'm staying here at UCSD, uh, I, I really look forward to continuing the work on this application in the fall and and throughout the school year. So my uh, continuing goal for the summer is to complete the Facebook app uh, along with these features that we've sort of outlined by uh, the beginning of September, and. Um, and uh, you know, looking ahead at, at the realities of, uh, of sort of the, the IRB approval process as well as cooperation with these other departments, uh, sort of a realistic goal is to, for this to go live uh, by December. And at that point, we, we'll start to request that students uh, participate in our study and start to gather actual student data. And so at that point, uh, once we build uh, this model, the social graph, then we can begin to do analysis of the data and see how, um, how these different characteristics, such as GPA and, uh, and infection or, or mental health, uh, spread throughout the social graph. So I would uh, like to give many thanks to, to my mentors on this project for their you know, support and guidance, uh, everyone at the IDASH program for their help throughout the summer, and of course the NIH for uh, their support of IDASH and our department. So if you have any questions, I can take them now, or uh, please email me offline. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Myung, we're all used to seeing the terms of service and clicking I agree 
practically unconsciously to that on websites. But how do you anticipate the uh, explicit opt-in that the IRB is requiring is going to impact the number of students who will be involved in this? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, of course, I'm assuming that it'll, you know, decrease participa participation to a certain degree um, because uh, anytime you require two clicks instead of one, uh, you know, that's sort of another barrier to entry. But I think we're really going to work on um, making this, uh, the, the, the opt-in language, the, this, you know, screen that we showed them to be really clear and concise and um, I think as non-threatening as possible so that, you know, students feel comfortable sharing their information with us, which, uh, you know, we hope, we hope that we'll, 